2023 in view. This is a make or break point for Nigeria. But the irony of it is we have gone past breaking point and are now bent to a point of utter disrepair. We are contorted past the point of recognition and a once beautiful tree is marred to a grotesque state. In Nigeria, the beauty of promise is now beastly and charred. We have seemingly lost whatever it is that made us the pride of a continent. <clears throat> The stance fire that has burned over so furiously since independence has grown into a massive conflagration. The elephant has become the elephant in the room and is no purple elephant by any imaginings. So wh while 2023 is supposedly a crossing, it really is no more than the symptom of a far worse Malay. This is what Nigeria is now. This is what we have become, a parable of how the mighty fall. Nigerians are either thieves or beggars generally. No one in their wildest nightmares will have thought this. No one will have contemplated this scenario. In 1998-99, we thought the wars had come to an end, and with an election that brought in a seeming consensus precedent, we hoped the future was bright. And it was. We could see it. In the horizon, we saw a rising sun, a big ball of light, life and hope. And we raised our hands in delight, but we didn't know that the orange glow we could foresee was going to burn our beards and our farms. Well, 2023 is here. And the confusion of our future is upon us. We have four, four main candidates for the election, out of which three seem to be in the forefront. You know, the youth or young people have a champion in the person of Obi. The ruling party is fielding a controversial candidate and the opposition has a divided house. As powerful and as strong as, powerful and as, strong as these three seem, I see a hit or miss option for the three. The fourth candidate, funny enough, is barely ever mentioned in the fray. And he just might be the best option in this Rufo Rufo match of wits, guts, jabs, and of course, Luca, filthy Luca to boot. This is where we stand between devils known and unknown and a sea of ignorant, emotional, ranting populace, each pelting dung at his neighbor in a bid to get a grip on the political future. It is mayhem. Well, the only consolation I can foresee is. There is no other leadership you can have that can do worse than what we currently have. Well, well maybe except one. <laughs> but, but we wait to see. Nothing is cast in stone. Nothing is written in tablets of clay. All is scripted in ink on wooden slates and can be washed away. We are left with nothing than hope. Hope for the best that somehow a divine hand will come to our rescue, even as we dance the dance of the blind and swing our walking canes widely and ineffectually, hoping we will strike and make a hit and make a difference and maybe finally make a country, make a nation, make history and fulfill the greatest potential that is inherent in us. But first, there is 2023, a crossroad. <laughs> this is the part where we do like this. Right. Actually, yes, yes. actually, you know, I like the way you come from a poetical, philosophical, so, metaphorical right. angle to describe right. what right. will happen next year. Right. Where right. somebody, a particular spokesperson, was trying to de was trying to denigrate one of the political candidates and said right. you had. A Bachelor of Philosophy is the least qualified. I, I guess he will come and learn from you that <laughs> philosophy is very important. It's, it's, yeah, Actually, probably. what you've said is right. Nigerians have to be mindful this time around. Oh, yeah. We have to be mindful. Oh, yeah. We know it's not all about the euphoria of chanting in solidarity for your candidates. Right, right. It's you, more than that. Let's kind of sit back and look. What do we really want as a nation? What do we want? Right. 2020 is indeed a crossroad. Whatever happens crossroad. 2023 will determine the fate of Nigeria. And Forever, the effect perhaps. will be catastrophic. Yeah. Either 
positively or negatively. If we make it wrong now. Yeah, if it's a wrong decision, we will suffer the effect very well. No, right. no doubt about it. Because right. already you see insecurity problem, you see economic problem. Yeah. You, yes, there is an excuse of the global meltdown Matter from fact. the Ukraine from the from the spillover from COVID. Right. From COVID, we've right. not recovered from COVID to U Russia, Ukraine war to some other things. Right. But that's not just an excuse. That's right. COVID, Russia and Ukraine war has set there's what we call datum level. It has altered the datum level of the world. Right. But any country that can beat that datum level will do well. So don't we cannot just be using COVID and, uh, as excuses. and as excuses. But, but you know, that's we, just a datum level. We have a leadership that is very uh, adept at the at, at the blame game. It's always it's not my yeah, fault. It's, it's not my fault. fault. This it's is just people. what we, it's, it's incredible <laughs> yeah. what's going on. We have yeah. the most immature leadership I can we imagine. To, we have to be intentional. Know, so I don't know. Christoph Sage, I mean, um, I think at summarize, you know, um, everything that you've written in that nice poem right. as hope. Right. Right. You know, hope is super important, you know, um, and it's, it's a currency that lots of Nigerians are hope. beginning to go bankrupt on. All right. You're you know, because we've been right. hoping. Yeah. We've been hoping as far back as yeah. 2011, yeah. you know, we... We've been hoping for a lot of time. Yeah, yeah. We, we've, been, we've been, I mean, we've been hope hoping. Hope <laughs> <laughs> And to help 2023. <laughs> I, I think that we need to pretty much transcend beyond hope. And this election is going to be very decisive. It's almost like this should just be this, you know, spiritual, divine hand you know right. i mean I, I do design so there's right. one magic one too you right. Know? right just wave a magic right. wand and you know, just bring the person we think we need right because right. i mean right. again when i when i towards the end of your you know your poem yeah. i'll use that to describe what you just said right, right? I, I mean you said something around the first the fourth the, the first the second the third and the fourth candidate you know everybody thinks that we know the right person right. that will take Nigeria to where right. it should be. Yeah. And the, the shocker is that the person that we think collectively is the person might, just might not, not be, be the person. Exactly. So I see this election as something we should not approach with um, some just intellect, right? Right. right? There should be a deeper level intelligence, some you. supreme level intelligence. I get you. So, I mean, this is like a clarion call to Nigeria. Yeah. Mean, if you know what you pray, <laughs> pray yeah. to. I think you start praying to that thing. That's right. If we miss it, it's going to be and very we, we don't. We don't seem to be ready for 2023. We don't really seem. But I have just one last hope. My hope is that, what well, you just mentioned the providence. Mm. My hope is that the people who seem to be running things, the people who are going to be vital in determining who comes or who doesn't come, you know, might be struck by a sense of patriotism, mm. by a sense of honesty and decency and say, you know what, this country depends on us to do the right thing now. So I'm saying maybe somehow the people who are pushing whatever they're pushing will be struck by this sense of responsibility. Sure and say, you know what, let's just save this country. Um, that's my hope. Last hope. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's, turn, turn it, let's turn it now to Suleiman in Abuja. Um, what, what do you have to say to this incredible poem that you know, Sage has delivered to us here at the studio? Yeah, uh, I must salute uh, Sami for that wonderful view. And I almost um, forget myself when he was reading, uh, the going through those wonderful you about uh, his wonder view about 2023. And one thing we must uh, say is just as uh, Daniel said, we must be very, very careful in choosing leaders this day in 2023. It is a we have the chance to get it right once again come 2023. And we need to by now start looking at the manifestos of each of these uh, candidates. I remember in one of our advocate week, like uh, last month or there about, we discussed that we must look at manifesto beyond a glossy paper. But what does that manifesto have for Nigerians? And we should understand one thing. There is no angel or someone that will come. At least we have like 18 candidates just for the highest office in the land. One thing we must understand is that we have a very, 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 aside from what is expected from the political actors, we as a citizen too, we have a role to play. It has it shown that all these these candidates have something to offer. They've also shown that oh, they have their plans and their manifesto. West players tell 
But one thing is this, we must be very, very careful in investing our emotion. The same way we have been doing it from 1999 down to 20, 2019. I remember this mood that we had as a country, as a people, was the same mood we had in 2015. So your guess is as good as, uh, as mine. So one thing we must take away from here is that in 2023, we must have an holistic approach to leadership. And my advocate, my point has always been this. Our uh, focus has always been on who occupy the office of the president. We, forgot, we, forget, we used to forget that the president alone doesn't run the government. We have the senators, the House of Rep, and even the governors. So things that are even basic, that have bedeviled us as a nation, that is things like primary education, primary health care, among other things. We forgot that it falls under the purview of some selected uh, people. So we must get it right, right from the top down to, to the bottom. So we have the chance in 2023, and I'm very hopeful that we'll get it right. All right, we've got more important topical issues um, coming just right after the break, and Suleiman Akonde would be next after the break. Do stay with us.